Okay, I'm going to talk about the commercial power translator today. Um, unlike anglophone context, where literary translators are often regarded as invisible in Japan, uh, there exist translators who are highly visible to the degree that they could be regarded as celebrities. Um, these translators, however, first earned their prominence for professions other than translation. For example, Haruki Murakami, inarguably the most famous translators in contemporary Japan, first earned fame as a novelist before um, attaining celebrity status as a translator. Publishers uh, routinely capitalize on Murakami's literary success and highlight his persona as a novelist when promoting his translation. Likewise, there are readers uh, who are attracted to his name on the book covers rather than the old source authors when they choose translation for reading. So uh, translator's social status could have a significant impact over the way uh, foreign literature is presented and read in the target culture. However, current research on literary translation in relation to translator visibility typically center on the manifestation of translators' visibility or invisibility in the translator text or paratext and aspects which could potentially impact the circulation and reception of foreign literature, such as the commercial value of translators has not drawn attention of literary translation studies scholars. I argue that this lack of attention to the industry in literary translation study is partly responsible for the gap uh, between practicing translators and academia. So uh, this paper, we consider the commercial aspects of literary translation by incorporating celebrity studies concept of visibility. Um, it will explore the interaction between translator celebrity statuses and publishing practices to a case study of three celebrity translators who are most prominent in present day Japan. They are Motoyuki Shibata, Sachiko Kishimoto, and Haruki Murakami. Let's not finish bonding. Ah, there you go. Um, celebrities in general are frequently referred to as commodities due to the nature of celebrity creation process, which resembles commercial goods production. Drea Sense views celebrity as a kind of power, which can generate profit by selling one's name to a product. This paper uh, posits that such processes also take place in literary translation and argue that when a translator is a celebrity, their name potentially functions as powerful marketing tools, which add commercial values to the translation they produce. The instances where this phenomenon most clearly manifests in literary translation is branding of translators. Omundsen argues that the process of turning an author into a distinctive cultural brand is what distinguishes a celebrity author from those who are famous but not celebrities. The same applies to literary translators whose name value is used uh, to market uh, imprints and anthologies dedicated to translations, which I will demonstrate. What potentially attracts people to celebrity brands, though, is not only their degree of fame or physical attraction, but also the elements attributed to the celebrities, such as their personalities, skills, and talents. And today, I will demonstrate the branding processes of the three translators by examining how their anthologies and imprints are promoted and presented, and how the translators personally manifest in these processes. I will first map up the celebrity, celebrity translators' persona and discuss how they are manifested in their respective brands. Uh, Kishimoto Sachiko. Uh, Kishimoto's persona centers on her profession as an essayist, essayist due to her best selling essays, uh, which earned her first fame, including personality type that holds grudge. Uh, her essays, uh, which typically consist of ordinary episodes surrounding her daily life, are written in her idiosyncratic language known as Kishimoto style humor, which, was, uh, which has dedicated followers. Kishimoto claims that uh, the popularity of her essays has had a significant influence on her fame as a translator. On the other hand, uh, Kishimoto is also known for her quirky, cutting edge taste in the choice of source authors. This includes um, Nicholson Baker and Tom Jones, uh, whom a literary uh, critic regards as the writer who explores mad explored madness, art, and violence. And 
Her pers uh, persona largely consists of her essayist personalities, her talent in translation and cutting edge taste in literature, which is evident in uh, literary critics' comments, um, which says Shimoto Sachiko, who has tremendous support from foreign literature fans for being a translator of peculiar writers such as Stephen Milhauser and Nicholson Baker, is both genius and ridiculous at the same time. And the next, um, Shibata, a retired professor of contemporary American literature, is a prolific translator who is regularly uh, referred to as the most famous Japanese translators among full-time translators in present-day Japan. Shibata is uh, famous for translating works by authors such as Paul Auster and has earned prestige for his talent in translation. Shibata's expertise and talent in translation form to his persona as an authority of translation. But there is another powerful element uh, which forms Shibata's persona. He has been famous for his close association with Murakami, which is what propelled uh, Shibata to celebrity. Shibata has been Murakami's official proofreader for, uh, for his translations, and Murakami praises Shibata's uh, Shibata's translation skills in interviews and essays and talk about how he learned his translation skills from Shibata. Um, such endorsements not only highlight Shibata's expertise, but also make his close relationship with Murakami official. The pair regularly discusses Anglophone literature together in interviews and talks featured in literary magazines as well as co-authors essays such as the Kajau talk on translation. Hence, um, Shibata's persona consists of his expertise in foreign literature, talent in translation, and association with Murakami. Murakami first earned his fame for his first novel, He Had Wind Sing, in 1979. Um, what propelled him from a famous writer to a celebrity is the publication of his first, first bestseller, uh, first bestseller Norwegian Wood in 1987, which had sold over 10 million copies across Japan. Um, inarguably, um, Murakami's literary success has had a, a significant influence over his celebrity status as a translator. Furthermore, um, his novel writing intact with his translation practice, so, uh, which is clearly manifested in paratexts such as afterwards essays and interviews. For example, Murakami describes the importance of his Fitzgerald to him as a novelist whose work he translates. Had it not been for um, Fitzgerald's novel, I would not be writing the kind of literature I am today. Indeed, it is possible that I would not be writing at all, although that is neither here nor there. Other than this, uh, Murakami has been regarded as responsible for the popularity of certain authors' works in Japan, in particular Fitzgerald and uh, Raymond Carver. Hence, uh, Murakami's novelist personality, expertise in foreign literature, and authorial voice for the source authors such as um, Pierre and Carver form the core component of his persona. Shimoto's persona, uh, consisting of her quirky taste in foreign fiction and humorous characteristics, are marketed into anthologies under her name, consisting of works by authors, uh, some of whom uh, relatively unknown in Japan, selected and translated by herself. Malik and Sudaka, Sudaka support that when celebrities' personal properties match the product they're endorsing, it increases the truthworthiness of the product. This strategy is uh, reflected in the publication of a, collected, a collection of strange love stories, which consists of these are short stories uh, relating to, to love by authors including Amy Holmes, uh, who is known for her unusual short stories, and The Uncomfortable Room, which includes works by authors uh, who write disturbing, dis disturbing stories, such as Brian Everson. The list of authors including, included in Kishimoto's collection, whose name have little commercial value within the Japanese book market, indicates that um, publishers are investing in Kishimoto's name value um, to attract potential readers including those of her essays. This is evident in, her, in how her name is listed visibly larger than those of the source authors on the jacket for a collection of strange love stories, despite its inclusion of the works by source authors who are famous, such as Ali Smith. Uh, 
However, um, they that, um, sorry, yeah. This, sorry, uh, as, um, as in Kishimoto's case, uh, Shibata has published a number of anthologies that reflect his persona as an expert in Anglophone literature, including American masterpiece classics. However, uh, his close association with Murakami seems to be a stronger element, uh, which adds value to the translations. This is evident in the launch of an imprint dedicated to translated fiction selected by Shibata and Murakami. Murakami Shibata House of Translation was launched in 2016 as a project to reissue the works by the two translators' favorite authors, mainly contemporary American and British, which had been out of print. The imprint has so far um, published 10 books, with the two translators retranslating two books each. The rest are reprints of uh, pre existing translation by other translators. The launch of the imprints um, reflects the concept of celebrity brand that a celebrity can generate new customers and even uh, revive a brand that has lost its, uh, its market position by generating new enthusiasm from the consumers. The imprint has dedicated website containing an introduction to the imprint uh, where each translator is given the equal coverage. That promotional message featured here uh, on the slide uh, emphasizes, two, emphasizes two elements, the translator's personal attachment to the novels and the expertise in foreign literature. As, um, <clears throat> however, um, there is a visible dis discrepancy in how the translators are mentioned on each volume, uh, both on the website and the book. For instance, um, Although the translator's name appears equally visible against those of the so and website, Murakami's name is repeated in the catch line of the volume he translated. As you can see on the slide, um, Murakami's such endorsements portray him as a credible spokesperson in the imprint, uh, which uh, provides the reader with a degree of confidence, increasing the level of acceptance, a strategy used in celebrity brands. By contrast, the catch, uh, catch line for the volumes translated by his contemporaries, including that of Shibata, do not mention that translators. Um, what distinguishes Murakami from his contemporaries, though, is that um, he also has an imprint under his own name, entitled Murakami Haruki Translation Library. The library uh, incorporates translations he has produced under Chuo Koron Sinchas over the course of 30 years, including the entire collection of covers and features, um, Murakami's most iconic translation. The promotional features on the book cover designs and publishers' website have a strong emphasis on Murakami. For example, all the jackets carry features which emphasizes the translator, including the title of the imprint, Murakami's name as a translator, and the image of a cat. The pet closely associated with uh, Murakami's private life and his novels. Um, the use of the cat logo reflects the publisher's attempt to give the imprint instant personality and appeal, another strategy which used in the production of celebrity brands. This approach becomes more apparent in the promotional scripts, which come under each volume on the website. Although the great majority of the volumes appear to be listed together with a short summary of the books, the script uh, become even more personalized in the case where Murakami has a strong attachment to uh, soul soldiers such as um, Fitzgerald. One of the clearest, clearest example of this is uh, The Great Gatsby, as shown in the slide. Um, the reader, in time, may generate um, relational bonding with Murakami through reading the translation to which he has a strong attachment. The publishers are not alone in their participation in the branding processes. As in the case of literary celebrity who engage themselves in the careful manipulation of their public self-image to accommodate competing regime, regimes of literary value, the translators also expect themselves to promoting their uh, translation in paratext, such as uh, like essays, um, interviews and conversation published in literary magazines. 
Kishimoto, for instance, regularly talks about her upcoming translation project on Twitter. Other than that, she often gives talk about um, her works in interviews and at book launches. In one of such interviews, uh, Kishimoto discusses the works by um, Nicholson Baker, which is included in one of her anthologies. She reveals how she relates herself to the peculiarity of protagonists in the story, highlighting her personal link with the novel, which potentially arouses her fans' curiosity, including uh, those of her essays. And in the case of Murakami and Shibata as a collaborator, they tactically promote the imprint two years prior to its launch by discussing the outdoor print foreign literature they admire in the seventh issue of a literary magazine Monkey, to which uh, Shibata is an editor in chief. The magazine lists their favorite novels, uh, including those that would later be included in the imprint. Furthermore, um, the two translators discuss their personal attachment to certain authors, including uh, Carson McCullers and endorse, her, uh, endorse, her, endorse their works, which they would later translate for the imprint, um, as you can see on the uh, screen. At the end of the conversation, Shibata explicitly mentions the intention to launch uh, the imprint. So the discussion effectively advertised the upcoming project by providing the reader with their rationale for bringing the works back into print. This conversation was later included in the co-authored essay, Let's Talk About Real Translation, published in 19, uh, 29, uh, 2019. Further attracting the potential readers, Hang suggests that uh, when a celebrity selected, celebrities of selected attributes receive attention, consumers elaborate and systematically processes these attributes along the central route to persuasion. So the publication of the essay uh, which allows the reader to elaborate translator's attributes is likely to increase reader's positive evaluation of the imprint. Similarly, similarly uh, Murakami, wrote, Murakami wrote an essay entitled uh, Trans Translation Works for Murakami Haruki, produced by the same publisher of this, uh, his imprint, which is dedicated to his uh, translation practice. It includes personal anecdotes relating to the library as well as introduction to all the titles included, included in the imprint. So the essay itself um, functions as an advertisement. In his essay, Murakami emphasizes the personal aspect of the library by explaining how its launch was based on his personal taste, including the book cover designs. In addition, he reveals the significance of the source soldier to him as a novel, especially Fitzgerald and Carver, to whom he has uh, formed a particular attachment. Murakami's comment in the slide not only endorses, endorses the authors, but also adds to the characteristics of the imprint. Put another way, uh, Murakami uses his illustrative characteristics when promoting his translation, a strategy employed by celebrity endorsers who are hired to promote brands precisely because of the, the ability to bring certain characteristics to the brand. brand. Another example of this is Murakami clearly distinguishes his translation from existing versions by his contemporaries by emphasizing the uniqueness of his translations. Like, um, surely there are many who could translate Carver's work, or that I am not the only one who can translate Fitzgerald's work, but nobody can translate the way I do. Um, comments like this uh, not only highlights the translator's persona as an authority voice represented these authors, but also potentially influenced readers' perception of the authors. Conclusion. Um, this paper has demonstrated that uh, translator celebrity status can function as a powerful commercial tool, which promotes new translation as well as those that had once lost their market appeal. The translator celebrity status allowed them access to branding processes, which uh, very much like very much resembles those of a celebrity brand. The publishers incorporate the element related to the translators, including their persona as novels, essays, expert in foreign literature, authority voice for source orders in their anthologies and imprints. The anthologies by Kishimoto, for instance, are marketed as a collective collection of quirky short stories which represent her persona, while the library is marketed as a collection of foreign literature, which has special significance in Murakami's writing career. 
in the case of Murakami Shibata brand, although the two translators persona as a, a, a literary expert characterize the print, Murakami's persona as a novelist become overly present uh, when promoting individual titles, as he say in his quote, which endorsed the source authors uh, through his authorial voice. It could be argued that the stronger the relationship between the translator's persona and the source text or the author, the more effective an advertising becomes as each other its readers trust and raises their positive evaluation of the translation. The hierarchy of the translator's visibility is also clearly observable in how their translation and marketing. Murakami's exceptional degree of fame is represented in his imprint launched under his own name, while uh, Shibata needs to be paired with Murakami to produce an imprint, whereas Kishimoto's name value seems sufficient to attract readers for high quality, but perhaps not for an imprint. Similarly, um, the publishers of Murakami Shibata brand uh, prioritize, prioritizes Murakami's name coverage over that of Shibata on the webpage, uh, while the other translators of the imprint are hardly mentioned. In addition, it is not that only the publisher who benefit from translator celebrity status the translators themselves seem to take advantage of the fame, which allows them the freedom of choice in the selected source text, high media attention they receive, as well as uh, the freedom to publish essays on translation through which they promote their translations. Furthermore, as in the case of celebrities, which uh, celebrities whose endorsement increases the uh, per perceived trustworthiness of the product, their reputation as a renowned novelist, essayist, literary expert generates a level of belief that foreign literature chosen and translated by them uh, is worth reading. Hence, um, translated celebrity status, especially when their persona are associated with the field of literature, could have a significant commercial influence over how the translations are promoted and presented. Celebrity studies concept of visibility used in this, chap, uh, this paper has allowed me to address a translator's input in a larger production chain of translated literature beyond translation processes, as Benuti inspired the research often does. In addition, it has also enabled this paper to develop the topic of translator visibility into a more commercially commercial focused area of discussion that perhaps has the potential of influence the way publishers, publishers promote translated literature. Uh, which at the present has a strong focus on source authors. So to conclude, um, commercially focused research on literary translators could contribute to filling the gap and to generate a dialogue uh, between academia, practicing translators and publishing industries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, it's an interesting talk. It's really fascinating to hear that there are celebrity or star translators <laughs> in Japan. Um, we have a few questions. Um, Barbara is asking, um, are all literary translators named on the covers of books in Japan? In the UK, US, there is a translator on the cover campaign launched this year. So are the are the are the literary translators all named on the covers in Japan? On the... Yeah, this is um, a publish their publishing convention that uh, required translator names on the book covers. So everyone has a minimum recognition. Oh, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> um, I wanted to know. I put it also there because otherwise I forgot it. Could you tell us more about the status of literary translators in general in Japan? Are there examples? Uh, are there examples you discuss in your talk exceptions, or are there other or are there many celebrity translators in Japan? Um, there are lots of famous or well-known uh, translators in Japan, but um, when you when it comes to the celebrity. Um, the only handful like those who I mentioned today. Um, like well-known translators in general, they are, are very visible. They do lots of activities such as like book launch, uh, book signing, and then um, give talks and things like that. Only that um, they haven't, they don't have access to things like anthologies or anthologies or imprint like, a, or maybe not so much media coverage compared to those I talked about today. But in general, um, because the 
readers in general in Japan are aware that when they are reading translated, it's their translation because um, it is written so, and they're also translators' name uh, on the book cover. So people are aware of that. So the publisher, um, yeah, they, they are willing to promote translators because um, often Japanese readers are more familiar with the, with the name of translators than those of source authors. So that works that way. So people choose translation by the name of, um, name of the translators. That's also common practice. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. There is another question again from Barbara. Uh, in addition to visibility on covers, are literary translators' conditions good in terms of fees, pay, and royalties? Um, compared to those in Britain, for example, um, definitely uh, they are better paid. But um, yeah, because uh, they get about uh, uh, everyone gets royalty, which is about fifty percent. And if all they get fifty percent, uh, translator also gets about fifty percent or forty percent. Whereas uh, in England, I think it's a really like a two, three percent, uh, five percent at most. So, um, of the yeah, compared to the 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 source soldiers, so definitely they are better paid. Mm -hmm. And a question which follows is a follow up question: Are these famous translators better paid than other literary translators? Well, when I interviewed publishers, they said um, that fame, level, level of fame doesn't affect the fee, but uh, call it, uh, like more like uh, experience, like uh, the longer the experience, <coughs> the better pay uh, you get. So, so that's what they say anyway. So, but I don't know if they pay more for the famous translator or not. But um, yeah, it's usually based on the experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe I have a short, as we have time, a short question. Um, listening to your talk, I, I'm, uh, an article came to my mind from Yvonne Lindquist. She was analyzing star translators in Sweden, and she uh, especially made the, the connection to uh, translation prizes. Uh, so are there prizes for translations in Japan? And yeah. uh, what kind of role do they play for this uh, celebrity status the translators have? Um, yeah, this, uh, yeah, one of the major um, translator awards, uh, their panel, the, the, the panel of judges are formed by these celebrity translators. So these uh, awards are usually for those who are like um, uh, emerging translators. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the celebrity, celebrity translators already, um, well, they are in a position to evaluate others' translations more like, and they, yeah, sometimes they do receive some award, but um, mostly translation awards are for um, like newcomers, like to create, uh, generating a, a opportunity for them to uh, start up their careers. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think there is a remark of Barbara, but that it's not really a question. And uh, we are now at uh, 3.30. So I think it's perfect uh, to thank you once again. Uh, thank you very much. It was a really fascinating talk. Thank you. Um,